Hey everybody, it's Shannon and I'm back again with another What Sold. Yes, so soon. <laughs> um, this is the items that sold in our online stores such as eBay and Poshmark, Etsy, Ruby Lane. These are the items that sold for us from the week of September 11th through the 17th. So I am just trying to play catch up here from the week I took off from making YouTube videos. So um, eBay definitely dominated our sales this week, as you'll see, um, mostly due to my husband taking up a lot of the listing slack um, while I was busy with lots of other things last week. And he also, you know, we've kind of um, varied the items that we're listing as well. We have a whole more eclectic thing going on right at the moment. And so it's just been interesting to see what's been selling and we've sold some really interesting things this week. So stay tuned and we will see what some of those things were. We're going to start off with a tool. So hubby is continuing to try to downsize um, tools, things that he just doesn't use as much anymore. And um, I'm assuming that's what this is. It's a table saw tool, a miter gauge, and it did not sell for $50, but it did sell for $35. Next up we have, okay, do you guys remember this? If you've been watching the What Sold videos for a while, um, my husband bought a bunch of these at I don't know, Home Depot, Lowe's, something like that. They were on clearance and he bought a bunch. I honestly don't even know how many he has. And so he hadn't listed any for a while and he ended up realizing the other day that he didn't have one listed. So he popped it on there and it sold fairly quickly and we got really good feedback. It sold for the full asking price of $26.99. Next up is a hunting blaze, uh, blaze orange hunting vest by Remington. I believe, if I am not mistaken, this was something my husband picked up. I want to say he picked it up at the bins because that's mostly where he shops. And that would be where he would pick up something like this, especially with this brand. The brand's okay. Um, it did sell for $28.99. Next up is a blanket by Eddie Bauer. Okay, so it's a vintage Eddie Bauer home. It's 100% wool, it's king size blanket. Now I was looking through as my husband was, you know, he does a lot of listings and so I was, and he was the one who actually sourced this at an estate sale that we went to together back in the spring, I think it was. And so he looked it up. I think he paid about $25 for it. And so it was his, you know, his item, his call, everything like that. But as I was looking through listings and I think trying to cross post it somewhere, I just, I noticed that his listing only had a picture of the blanket folded. Like he hadn't taken the time to like spread it out or find a place where he could spread it out on a couch or something like that to kind of get an idea of the whole pattern. So I was, I suggested very tactfully, <laughs> I think, maybe not. <laughs> I suggested that he needed to add some photos to the listing. Well, he didn't get to it right away and I would have done it. It's just, he's got an inventory system out in our garage and I would need him to find the item for me first and then we could do it. But anyway, um, we got this offer for $80 for this blanket and I we went kind of tried to decide whether that was good enough. And I said, you know, if you don't take the $80 offer, you should take better pictures and, you know, keep the price higher or, you know, and maybe hold out for a higher price. But he just decided to save the work, take the profit, and move on with his life. <laughs> so, so far, so good. We haven't heard anything back. I mean, he had checked over the blanket. It wasn't like he hadn't looked at it. But, um, you know, sometimes buyers just want to see the whole thing and make sure there's no stains and, and things like that. So, anyway, we're moving on to from a wool blanket to a pair of sandals. These are by Clark's. 
Um, I found they were actually in really, really good condition. You can see it kind of still has its price tag on the bottom or its little barcode. They were basically new. I don't think anyone had worn them. Um, I got figured out the name, all that kind of thing. And they didn't sell for $35, but they did sell for $24. And I paid for. Another little bins find. So that little clearance center we go to keeps paying and paying. Um, my, I think it was the day my husband and I went to the bins together, possibly. But I, it wasn't that long ago. So this did sell actually really quickly. But um, this was a lampshade for like a torsier style lamp. And the brand is Stiffle. So he did notice that when he was at the bins. He saw this milk glass shade and he was kind of looking, looking it over. And he saw that it was marked. So he just added it to our pile. And it sold for $50. And it actually was being shipped internationally. So... This is when I'm glad my husband does the shipping and he's good at it. So I'm sure it worked out fine. I don't know. Usually, so it's through the eBay International Shipping Program. They generally tell us, but you know, that's interesting now that I meant, now that you mention it. I should try to look at the tracking on these because I used to get email notifications or at least some kind of app notification that the items got to the sorting center and then I would get an email that they left the sorting center and then I would get emails when they were delivered. So I just, I don't know if eBay stopped doing that or something changed in my notifications, but um, I'll have to double check that it actually got, you know, that it arrived. This was only last week, so it's possible that it's still in transit. Okay. Um, Speaking of, yeah, it's probably still just in transit. We'll see. Next up, speaking of international listings, we're going to have to wait and see on this one too. I don't know why. Okay. Sorry. Just something I'm figuring out. So a person messaged us and asked what our best price would be for two of our hats. And they messaged us through this um, Notre Dame hat first and he just said how much for it's your best price for the pink Notre Dame hat and the Mickey Mouse hat and you know my husband came up you know, some, sometimes those you know we like to be accommodating we like to have customer service but sometimes these questions they just they they cause a lot of work but they don't lead anywhere and so my husband's trying to figure it out figuring out what, you know, we were like, you tell us what you want to pay, like what's going on. And it actually worked out really good. And the guy followed through, the guy was ready to, to make, you know, payment. And he was going to, um, you know, we had to make a new listing to do it because, and it actually worked better that way because he was an international buyer and he, I wouldn't have, we wouldn't have been able to combine the shipping um, you know, on one invoice on the international orders, they all have to be shipped separately. So we went ahead, we made the separate listing. We got $20 per hat, $40. My husband made this listing. Now I hope this was clear enough because as I was going to make sure that the hats were no longer listed on the other sites, I realized that we have two Mickey Mouse hats and the guy never, you know, he never differentiated which Mickey Mouse hat he meant. Um, and my husband forgot that we had more than one. So he just grabbed the Mickey Mouse hat he thought it was and he just made a listing and everything like that. So I'm hoping the buyer looked at the listing that that was the Mickey Mouse hat that he had in mind <laughs> and we'll see. So hopefully he was observant and paying attention and it was no big deal. I will let you know. 
anyway, this is a bolo, something to keep an eye out for. Um, I don't honestly know how easy this would be to find, but um, I think this had a lot of things going for it. So it's a vintage Gap leather blazer. Now leather jackets can do pretty well. Leather blazers are kind of hot for fall. Um, the color is so nice. It's an oxblood. And I've, I saw other Gap jackets listed very similar that were just like regular red, like bright red, and they were not selling as well. So this is like a perfect like fall blazer. Plus it's an older Gap style, so it's Y2K. So that's the whole thing it's got going for it. So I listed it a little bit higher so I could send and receive offers and I got an offer for $90 and I went ahead and took that. I And I bought this a couple weeks ago, thrift store, half off day. I paid about, I want to say like $7 or something for it. We've talked about this style of mug, coffee mug before. Um, this was a mug we picked up on our road trip recently. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh, it's all a blur sometimes, but if, if you remember our Washington road trip, it was possible it was on that trip. Cause I think I, I know what little, it was the little middle of nowhere, Montana thrift store. Now Expo 86 Vancouver, that that's, you know, could be good, but definitely the no spill style mugs are popular. And so somebody who was, you know, looking for the Vancouver World's Fair um, souvenirs could possibly have picked this, you know, picked this one fairly quickly because of the unique style. And it sold for $18. A little bread and butter item. I think I sent a percentage offer on this one. It sold for $17.59. And some cross-stitch kits are huge bunny. Some are just kind of average. Um, this one, if you would, one, one that you can look for is the Dimensions Gold kits. And those can be really high prices, like hundreds of dollars. But $17.59 works for me. Next up was a maxi dress, a double knit polyester empire waist. It had awesome like big polka dots and then little polka dots, um, just very 70s and everything. Empire waist, like I said, maxi dress. And that was listed for a while, but it sold for $40. Now check this out, $50 for a hat. Okay, so this hat is just, it's the Gore-Tex, right? It's Browning, which is another, you know, hunting kind of brand, kind of like the Remington vest. Um, it's a good time of year. It's a fleece hat. Um, anyway, I'm thinking we said it must have been... Let me see. I'm looking. Made in Korea. Okay, so vintage as in like probably 80s, 90s. Anyway, 50 bucks. That was a Bins hat, I'm pretty sure. And, um, or if not, like I said, if not, it's just Goodwill. And that's $2 or less. So I just crack up because, you know, the videos I did recently about hats and I got all excited about my Portland Trailblazers hat and then this hunting fleece hunting hat sells for like 50 bucks It'll probably sell for more than my hat I was all excited about anyway <laughs> ah, I love reselling okay so echo this you know you see these all over the place right um, this one was in really good condition it's a french fry cutter um, it had a little bit of light wear, but I've seen these a lot of times. They're very rusty. So um, anyway, my husband listed it, and Mr. Mace listed them, $25, and it sold fairly quickly. This one, I believe, we were talking about it, and neither one of us could remember who had bought it. <laughs> um, 
it just had a very unusual buckle, the burlwood buckle, um, leather, I think it was made in Alaska. And we finally, it didn't get that much attention, but we finally took a $35 offer on that. Now I showed you guys this, I believe, in a thrift haul. It wasn't that long ago. Oh, it was the day I went uh, garage sailing for just a couple hours in the morning. So one of my recent haul videos. And I remember showing you and I was just like, look at this little thing. I don't know why I picked these things up, but they make me happy to just pick up the randomness. And it has to do with petroleum, oil, all that kind of thing. So it probably will do pretty well or someone will want it. So this is the type of thing that makes reselling so much fun for me, selling vintage. Um, like who, like this was 50 cents at that estate yard sale type thing. And it's just a plastic or acrylic paperweight. It commemorated, I think, it commemorated the day they found oil, whatever that was the date on there. But I think it was given away when the the office building was opened. So, sold for $40. My husband had found a comp for about $25. So it had, there was another one out there in, you know, recent time that had sold for $25. There weren't any others listed. So he listed it for $40 and it sold for that artful asking price of $40. And when did I do that video? A couple weeks ago. So it sold pretty quickly. Next up is another tool. Yeah, I'm assuming this was my husband's. It's a self-leveling cross line, laser level, whatever. Don't know if he, you know, some of these things he, he bought new for himself. He's either just breaking even, you know, maybe losing a little bit, but then um, you know, we're clearing things out. So $130 was the selling price for that. Now in my last video, I sold a pair of Sorel boots, if you remember. And the same day I found those, I found these. They are the original moon boot. So I'm going to show you. Okay. So it says moon boot on the inside. It's kind of a popular thing right now. I sold some last year. It says moon boot around the bottom. And then mostly what you're looking for, like it says moon boot right all over the boot. <laughs> but um, we found the style. There were certain ones that were selling for a little bit higher. There's a, cer a certain style moon boot that actually can sell for $60, $70, $80. Um, these were in really good condition. And we didn't sell it for $70, but we sold it for $50. And I paid $5 for those. This one took a while and I don't know why. Cause I just think maybe cause it's a size small, but when I saw this at a yard sale last, I believe it was last summer. So I think it's been listed for about a year. And I was like, I can't believe no one wants this. It's vintage Lauren Ralph Lauren. It's got a farm scene all over it. I mean, stuff like this is usually a no-brainer. It's a chore jacket. It's got a red corduroy collar. Like, somebody explained to me why this didn't sell right away. Maybe because my price was high. I don't know. $75. And that sold for full asking price, finally. And it went internationally. I think it just went to Canada. But there was nothing wrong with it. I guess it just needed the right person. I would pick it up again even though it took a year, <laughs> just because I think it's so cool. You know, a larger size might have sold faster. That could have been part of the problem. Next up is another unusual um, item. And, you know, sometimes we're, we're sourcing. My husband and I have been able to do some thrifting together lately. Like we've, we had to go down out of town last weekend, this past weekend and the weekend before. And so we stopped at some thrift stores that we don't hit on a regular basis. And, you know, Mr. Pishposh goes and does his thing. He goes to the areas that he wants to look and then everywhere. And he just fills up like a cart or whatever. And then I fill up, you know, I get my stuff 
And sometimes I don't even see some of the stuff until we get home or like until I see it listed. So I believe this is one of the things from the weekend before. Again, it sold super fast. The brand is Buck, I guess. Um, it's a knife, like a little knife and cutting board. And then the knife stows away to the back of it. So right for picnics and things like that. And they call it paper stone. Anyway, $60 that sold for. I'm, I think he, you know, he was telling me that everything he was finding that day, cause it was just, it was super fun because we were in a thrift store that, like I said, we don't hit very often. And he just kept, he's like, this stuff is like $4 and $3 and, and everything. So I know he didn't pay a lot for that one. And I'm, I believe that was the thrift store that he picked that up in. Now we have another shirt that took a while to sell that I thought would do better. This actually was part of my um, thrift haul of Hawaiian shirts from earlier in the year. And this sold for $38. As you recall, I did a bulk buy and each shirt was about $15. So 15 to 38, not great. Um, I thought it would have been a better pick, but Citron, Santa Monica, some of their shirts like did really, really well. Um, it could have been the coloring on this one was just not super sought after. I feel like I did sell something in that brand before though that did better. Maybe it was a woman's shirt. Um, here we go with Little Miss No Name again. So like I said on the last video, I sold the one with the burlap dress. And then this one was just in a generic blue dress. It sold for the full asking price of $120. Now she was a little bit more, you know, like her hair was a little bit more matted and messed up and everything. And I did have a buyer ask me a bunch of questions. Um, doll buyers can be a little bit picky. Um, that's the reputation they have in the reselling community. So you kind of have to have a thick skin to sell vintage dolls. So she was asking different condition questions and I, I was trying to answer as best I could, but I was just like, you know, the doll is kind of just as is, um, she wasn't designed to be super pretty. She's a begging little girl, you know, and her hair. Yeah, it's a little bit dry, all that kind of thing. So she asked me for the best price. I told her an offer. I sent an offer to her and she asked me a couple more questions and then again asked what my best price was. But since I had already given it, I didn't answer her again. And then a few days later, it sold for full price to someone else. So that worked for me. Um, I realized that first picture is lit so weird. It's like she has holes for eyes. That's even creepier. So I said we were away for the weekend and um, we were, and my husband found on our way down to where we were staying, we stopped at another thrift store that we didn't stop at the first weekend and we got a bunch of hats and my husband listed this one at our Verbo and it sold very, very quickly. So maybe his price should have been a little bit higher. I don't know. He's not sure, but somebody wanted it right away. It's a fly fishing rod company, Fenwick, and it sold for $25 and it was in good shape. We were at the Verbo. He didn't have to do any cleaning or anything to it because we didn't bring, you know, listing supplies and gear and tools and everything, but. Okay, now I went to a, there was a thrift store here in town that when I would come to visit years ago, I used to love to shop at. Well, it was closed when we moved here. It was closed all through the pandemic. Well, I noticed that they w had advertised the fact that they were cleaning out the shop. So they're selling the building. Um, they're cleaning out everything that was in it. So they were having like Friday afternoon yard sales and the owner was, um, like bringing some of, I think her own collection of stuff to every week, but just trying to downsize, get rid of the stock. And she was selling the building and hopefully she was going to be able to sell it. She said to someone who wanted to keep it as a thrift store. 
it's an old it was like an old house in an old house in town maybe originally even a church or something like that um so i the i've only been there once or did i go twice i can't remember i think i just i only made it there the one time i think i was planning the second time and it didn't work out but they has she has vintage clothing and this vintage wool shirt had a Woolrich label that I want to show you. That is a very early Woolrich label. Now you can go online and you can Google Woolrich labels and you can find charts that kind of break down the ages of the different labels. So I figured this one to be about the 1940s. So it was a very cool plaid shirt, but it had it had some issues. You know, it had holes. Okay, there's that loop collar, right? So even back in the 40s, you know, 40s, 50s, those shirts, I talked about it on that last arrow shirt. Um, so as you can see, there's some holes, there's some stains. Um, there was some wear on the, like on the elbows, some of the holes were so big. And so we kind of sold it. We just said it was as is. There was a lot of holes and spots fraying. And we just figured someone could kind of, you know, if they collected vintage clothing, um, that it might be something to add to their collection. Okay, so um, just, you know, older, a lot of times you find vintage Woolrich, it's like, you know, 60s, 70s, something like that. So to have it that early was really special. I paid about, I think, 4 to $5 for that, and we sold it for $30. So I just kept the price pretty low just to see if a collector wanted it. Now, yarn, I found this yarn at the same yard sale that I got the dolls at. And so another fast sale, right? So the um, the two Little Miss No Name dolls sold very quickly, right? Once I moved them to eBay. And this yarn sold fairly quickly as well. So these were both yard sales I went to this summer, probably, probably in August, I would say. This yarn, I don't pick up all yarn. Obviously, it's everywhere. Um, the best yarn to pick up is the like kind of like specialty materials or fabrics, like not acrylic, but wool or cashmere or you know silk or I don't know whatever different kind of alpaca, whatever different kinds of specialty materials you can find. Now this stuff was really cool looking. It was tweed. It was heavy duty. So I listed them. Uh, I had four, and you're going to make me say the word, right? Skeins, skeins, skeins. And I listed them at $15 a piece, and someone bought all four for a total of about, about $60. So anyway, that was a good sale. I love that. And I paid $3, I think it was, for the bag of yarn. We sold a lamp. So again, I'm glad my husband ships. Half this stuff would not even be listed if it was up to me only because I would not package things like this. <laughs> so if he wants to package it, then he can buy it and list it. Um, or I can say, hey honey, is it okay if we do this? We didn't sell it for $145. We took an offer for 100 or sent an offer maybe for $100. And um, it's not, it's probably vintage, but it's not an antique lamp. It's kind of a repro style, but they still are fairly sought after. So this was from a friend, a garage sale leftover, and that sold for $100. And one more on eBay, again, this past weekend, we were thrifting on our way down. Same place my husband bought the hats. He bought a whole bunch of fishing lures. And 
uh, gear, just kind of hoping that there would be one really good one in there. And this one... Okay, a quick editing note. I did get cut off on the first part of that video about that fishing lure, and then I wasn't sure exactly where it had cut me off, and obviously I cut off more than I expected. <laughs> so sorry, like that whole transition doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But anyway, let's just move on. And that it also sold very quickly. We sold it for $25, and we, um, you know, it's just, it's so much fun. I love the, I love how flexible reselling can be right now. Like you don't even have to be like at home. We thrifted something, listed it at our Verbo and sold it all within 24 hours. So definitely something to keep in mind. So let's move over to Poshmark. Poshmark has been slow, 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 but I am taking responsibility for that because I've not been cross posting a lot um, like I said, I don't know if I said this last week, but because my husband has been doing a lot of the listing and of all these kinds of odds and ends and tools, they don't necessarily fit well in Poshmark. So like today I listed a bunch of clothing. I'll get that moved over. So whenever, definitely on Poshmark, even though I'm sharing and sending offers and everything, on an ongoing basis, adding new items is definitely what keeps our closet alive. So kind of doing all of those things is what helps us. So Carhartt um, Rain Defender, it's a hoodie. I bought this thinking my husband might want it. Um, he passed on it. He just said he wasn't gonna be wearing sweatshirts like this so much anymore. I don't know what that means, but anyway, it sold for $38, which was fine with me. And um, next up was another hat. This one had been listed for a little while. Uh, I think we mostly got it because it was a nice color. And I think I did get that one at Goodwill for $2. Um, Miami Dolphins, um, not vintage or anything like that. So it sold for $19. Starbucks mug, me. You know, Starbucks is like, whatever. Some do well, some don't. I still have a hard time passing on them if they're cheap enough. This one sold for 16 And then this was a nice blazer. It was the Travex line of Eddie Bauer. As you can see, so it's like their travel material. So it doesn't wrinkle and you can fold it and everything like that. Uh, nice blazer. We got $35 for it. This is one of my oldest listings, I believe, and I think I only had it on Poshmark. Um, I just picked it up somewhere along the line based on what it looked like. I don't know that I... Maybe there were some good comps in the store. I don't know. But I lowered the price and lowered the price and finally got a $15 offer and took that. And another one I thought would do better based on style... Um, it's a vintage flashback, very 80s kind of blanket type jacket, Southwest style. Um, but, you know, not a whole lot of interest on it either, and it sold for $18. Now, moving over to Etsy, this is uh, my husband's Etsy shop. Um, I should probably stop calling it my husband's Etsy shop, even though... Because I buy for it, he does all the listing on it, but we're, we're playing around with, I think I, I talked about it last video of changing something. So we're, we're talking about just making like this, the one Etsy shop that we have. So, okay, that's not true. I still will have sewing patterns in a separate one, but you know, not, this was always metal and tweed. It was more like guy stuff or things that, you know, my husband picked or found or thought was interesting. But I, you know, I do a lot of the sourcing for the stuff that ends up in the shop. So it's our Etsy shop. It's no different. My husband lists on eBay, you know, the stuff I find and that he finds. So it's kind of the same difference. And we'll probably start cross posting things a little bit more often from eBay to Etsy. We're going to start Start with eBay, um, even for vintage items, and then move them over to Etsy if they don't sell on eBay. Etsy's just not our favorite platform at the moment. 
But then again, there are things that will sell on Etsy that, you know, might take a little bit longer or not sell for as much on um, eBay. I do like to pick up vintage soap dishes, <laughs> especially plastic ones. Uh, I don't know why, but I love the color of this one and very retro and there is a market for them. It sold for $14. Again, an item I picked up um, a while back, maybe back in the spring when we we were out, headed out of town, kind of like it was the same same place we went to this past couple weekends and it was one of the thrift stores that we don't hit on a regular basis. So this was back in the spring. I found these for like a dollar a piece and they sold for 45. They are Dansk. Um, they're not marked Dansk. I think they're just marked Denmark. And, but I, you know, through the magic of networking I in Instagram someone sent me some catalog pages and sure enough these were in the catalog so I could definitely say that they were Dansk now they are there's three originally there was six and you can fit them together let's see if there's a down I don't know if you can tell but you can fit the three together the six together to make a circle and then it's you know put the six candles together so but that was only half but people you could definitely split them up and just use them separately and my favorite kind of utensil to sell and I don't know why my husband only got twelve dollars for it um it's possible I don't know maybe he thought condition wasn't so great I'll have to ask him about that but I generally get eighteen for these so oh, now you can't even see description oh it's over here on this side okay um, tarnish and spotting on the metal okay now he just needs I'm pretty sure I, I thought I had told him that these sell for like $18 so I will double check that one I know he was about to list another one so I'll double check his price on that I did sell one today actually on Ruby Lane and that one I sold for 15 it wasn't Spar it was a different company and um, that one was a little bit less but Spar is kind of the name you know it's the name that is kind of famous for having having these types of utensils, these cheese slicers. Now this one, I, I can't show you a mark. Um, these are salt and pepper shakers. I picked them up because I recognize them. Now I double checked. They, they don't have a mark on the salt and pepper shakers, but I knew what they were. We just had to find out because of, it's just kind of a plain stoneware color what the actual pattern name was, and that was Tarmigan. The, the company is called Fabrique, and I knew it because I lived in Washington, and I came across it fairly often. So he was a, a Northwest um, potter, potter um, artist. And um, anyway, I'll show you. I pulled up. This is one of his more common uh, patterns, and this is the mark on the bottom. So it's kind of like an F with a line through it, or a J and a T, however you want to look at it. The artist is Jim McBride. This particular pattern is called Agate Pass. And, um, and then I had this other picture just to show you the mark again. So a lot of times people don't know that mark, but the, the company he formed was called Fabrique and it was vintage Northwest pottery. So we found, I recognized the salt and pepper shakers, like I said, found the brand or found the pattern name and we sold those for $50. Popping over to Ruby Lane, I sold a pattern for $25. This was a 1930s doll clothes pattern. And I had chosen a while back to put some of my antique patterns especially for dolls on Ruby Lane just to see if the market 
supported that a little bit better over there because of all the doll collectors. But this did take a little while. I'm sure it would have sold on eBay or even Etsy as well. But it sold for $25. Little leather coin purse I picked up for either a quarter or 50 cents at a yard sale. Sold for $15. It was really cool. It was like a double, a little double-sided type thing. And I think it was maybe just marked, is it marked at all? Genuine calf. So just so that I knew for sure it was leather. A little bit distressed. Fun, fun. And I sold some flatware on Ruby Lane. This was a whole set of just stainless Japan flatware, nothing special. Um, but I figured someone would want, you know, they'll want it eventually and would want the set. I only asked $40 for it. It's just a rose kind of floral type type design. Like I, like I said, nothing super special, but still something somebody will, oh, my grandma had those or something like that. So sold those for 40 And then the last sale I had on Ruby Lane and the last sale for the week was this Trafari um, necklace. It said pat patent pending. And a lot of times that indicates Alfred Philippe as the designer. And then you can look up and find his drawings, his patent applications, and things like that to confirm that that's what you've got. So anyway, a lot of the things, a lot of his um, work for Trafari can sell for really good money, especially dress clips, and this just sold for $31. Okay, that was it for my week. Um, hopefully... You guys had a good week as well. Things definitely are picking up um, as far as compared to the summer. But this week's been slow so far. It's Wednesday. It slowed down a little bit. I think eBay decided we needed a break that we were, had been doing too well. <laughs> it happens like that. I swear it goes in like cycles. And it, it frustrates my husband to no end. But you have to just kind of learn to like roll with it. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good rest of the week and we will talk to you later.